Hello and welcome to Goblins and Aliens. Today I'll be painting red and overcoming some of its challenges. There is a bonus tip towards the end. If you'd like me to explore other colours, please leave a comment below and I'll see what we can do. In the spirit of Christmas, I thought I'd paint this red gobble and his squig. The main challenge here is that there's two reds side by side. It would make sense to just use the one red off your palette providing the items were spread apart. For instance, a hat, a gun holster, a belt. With this particular model, we have a hat, a coat, right next to a squig, and all these items are red. The goal here is to show variation between the materials and to give a more visually appealing look. For the gobbo, I've started off using the same red for his hat and coat, taking on the understanding that it would be made of the same leathery material. Start off with a red, then shading down to a black red. For the squig, to get a more natural organic tone, more fleshy looking, I've started off with an orange undercoat. From here, I'm going to glaze a filter of red onto the top half, and then a, a shade of purple onto his lower half. The beauty of orange and purple when working with red is that they're of the same colour family on the same side of the colour wheel. As I'm painting away like a happy chappy, all of a sudden his head fell off. Now I have to re-prepare him. I wasn't going to do a sub-assembly, but you have to roll with the punches. This gave me the opportunity to just work on some of the dry brushing. Starting off with a chocolate brown, I then dry brush a mixture of brown and yellow, following that with just the yellow, and then at the end, white. Dry brushing is very messy, so this gave me an opportunity to get into those angles that I wouldn't have reached if his head was still attached. After doing the dry brushing, take the opportunity to tidy up the bits that I've over brushed. In hindsight, I should have sub-assembled this to start with. In regards to highlighting red, if you were to add white to your red mix, it would simply go pink. If you were to add yellow, it would just go orange. You need to make a decision if you want to have the sharpest of edge highlights with a slight pink tone or a slight orange tone. Here what I've done as my answer is to start off with the main red and work backwards, shading down to deeper and deeper. When shading, there will inevitably be a lot of overspill. This will give you an opportunity to highlight with the original color. Now for my bonus tip. Metal Chop. On this model, there are lots of baubles and Christmas lights, and instead of painstakingly highlighting shading each of them, I've got this little hack, which is mostly based on Slap Chop. Starting off with a, a dark metallic, a little bit of a highlight of a brighter metallic. When that is dried, I'll then have at it with Contrast paint, speed paint, or express paint. Here, I'm using speed paints. I do intend on making a full video on Metal Chop and I'll show you its better applications and you may start doing it instead of your Slap Chop. With the model complete, it's time to set him aside and think about the next one. If you did find any of this valuable, 
please like and subscribe and even share it. Thank you for watching. Take care.